Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Have you ever wondered how fast a diode laser can really go? Today I'm putting the ACMR P3 through its paces, a fully enclosed core XY engraver that claims up to 48,000 mm per minute travel speeds, and enough punch to chew through 30 mm wood in a single pass. Over the last month I've been running its 48 watt laser module on wood, acrylic, stone, leather, and even stainless steel, and I have plenty of surprises to share. From its lightning quick core XY motion to the precision of a built-in HD camera, we're about to see if this machine lives up to the hype. So turn on the exhaust fan and let's fire it up. Before we begin, this P3 laser engraver was provided for me to review by ACMR. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from laser cutters, materials, or accessories, then you can use those links to help support my channel at no additional cost to you. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The ACMR P3 is a a fully enclosed diode laser engraver. Diode lasers produce a visible blue light laser of 405 nanometer wavelength. Diode lasers are perfect for cutting and engraving woods, dark acrylics, and natural materials like leather and stone. Diode lasers can do some specific types of metal marking, which we'll get into later, but otherwise cannot cut or engrave metals or transparent materials like glass or clear acrylic. The most unique thing about the ACMR P3 is its Core XY kinematics. Core XY uses two stationary motors and an intricate belt loop to move the laser module around. Those two motors work together to move the laser. Core XY designs have some advantages. Since the motors work together, that increases the torque and therefore the possible acceleration and speeds of the laser. ACMR advertises max speeds of 800 millimeters per second, or 48,000 millimeters per minute, and it can in fact move at that speed. Here I test moving the lasers 300 millimeters side to side, and there's a noticeable difference between 10,000 and 48 thousand millimeters per minute. The ACMR P3 has a few different options for lasers. I have the most powerful 48 watt laser module with me today. This module packs a punch. It is the fastest cutting 48 watt laser that I've tested. I was chewing through 3 millimeter birch plywood at 1150 millimeters per minute in a single pass. I was blown away by the speed. The 48 watt module also has a switch on its side to turn off half of the diodes, turning it into a 24 watt laser. Sometimes lower powered lasers are preferable. You have more control over it. That extra finesse can give you better engraving results, especially on pictures. If you only need 24 watts, then you can pick up the standalone 24 watt module. This module is cheaper than the 48 watt module, yet still able to easily cut through woods and acrylics, just not quite as fast. The third module is a standalone 2 watt infrared module. The IR module emits a 1064 nanometer wavelength infrared laser. This wavelength is perfect for engraving metals like brass and stainless steel, and plastics like acrylic, ABS, and PLA. Finally, if you want the best of both worlds, then you can pick up the 2-in-1 module. This module combines a 10 watt diode laser with a 2 watt infrared laser. This lets you choose the wavelength that works best for the material that you are working with without needing to swap laser modules. As mentioned earlier, I have the 40 8 watt module with me today. At the top we see the power cables and air assist hose. A powerful cooling fan blows through the module, cooling the diodes and helping clear away smoke. On the side we see the switch for the two different powers. I'm not a huge fan of the switch itself. It feels a little fragile. Each time I use it I feel like it might break off. It hasn't yet, but I'm a little cautious when using it. At the bottom of the laser module we have a removable magnetic window. This window blocks reflected laser light, helping you keep safe while also giving you visibility. This can pop off for easy cleaning of the laser. Behind the window we can see the air assist nozzle. Air assist pushes compressed air out of the nozzle, increasing cut speed and quality while keeping soot away from the edges of your materials. Also at the bottom of the module is the focus tool. You can unscrew the knob and slide the tool out. The 48 watt module focuses at 8 millimeters, which is fully extended. So slide out the tool, loosen the laser module, and slide the laser module down until it rests on the surface of your material. Tighten the laser module, retract the tool, and you're ready to go. As you can see, focusing is all manual, but it's easy to do. While I wish there was a motorized Z-axis in autofocus, it's not really a necessity for most laser cutters and helps keep the P3 more affordable. The P3 has a very nice full enclosure. The base of the enclosure is sheet metal, with a translucent plastic top. It has a class 1 laser safety certification, meaning with the enclosure closed you can run this laser without requiring eye protection. This helps keep you and everyone around you safe while operating. There are little vents cut out near the front, where if you stand in just the right area you can see onto the honeycomb panel. But most of the light would be blocked by the laser module's window anyways, so I'm not too concerned about those openings from a safety perspective. The cover lifts open to let you access the inside of the machine. There is a safety switch on the cover. If you lift the cover, the P3 
battery will automatically pause, and once you close the cover, it'll automatically resume. This is a great safety feature to see. The cover itself is nicely designed. I love the elegant curve. At the back of the enclosure is an exhaust fan. It comes with about 5 feet of ducting that you can use to exhaust smoke either into a fume extractor or vents out of a window. The enclosure does a decent job at containing and extracting the smoke and fumes, but some smell, especially when cutting acrylic, does escape the enclosure. Included with the P3 is a very nice honeycomb panel. The panel keeps your material well supported, while offering great ventilation while cutting. Four magnetic pins are included, letting you secure your material to the honeycomb panel. The panel is screwed into the base, so it won't move around. The P3 has a large work area of 400mm by 400mm. I never felt limited by space. However, this base has a trick up its sleeve. It's actually a drawer that slides out, allowing you to access the honeycomb panel without opening the lid. This was extremely convenient. I found myself using this feature almost every cut, and the drawer and the honeycomb panel are pretty low profile, keeping the P3 thin and lightweight. The drawer just slides onto a groove at the base, but even without bearings, it is easy to slide out. At the top of the cover is the high definition camera. When using Lightburn, this camera gives you a live view of the inside of the laser, and lets you take a snapshot of the work area. You can then precisely position your designs, maximizing material usage and minimizing scrap. And I found the P3's camera to be the most accurate camera of all the lasers that I've tested so far. Running through the initial calibration with the included foam calibration dots resulted in almost millimeter perfect calibration. And you can see in these tests, when I engrave a design and update the snapshot, it engraved exactly where I placed the design. I am very impressed. Great job, Akmer. I was running batch jobs with ease, quickly positioning multiple copies thanks to this feature. And the visibility is great, both when the laser module is homed at the front or in the parked position in the back. The camera gives you full visibility of the work area. At the front of the laser, we see a key lock, to which Akmer provides two keys for. Next to that is the main power switch and the emergency stop latch. On the back, we see a switch for the exhaust fan and the LED lights. I wish the exhaust fan turned on automatically when you started to cut, but it's quiet enough that I just left it on all the time. The LED lights are located on top of the enclosure, near the back. I like having lights, but their position is a little too far back, and the x-axis and laser often cause a shadow right where it's cutting, where you'd want to see what's going on. On the side, we see the power input and USB connection. I like that the P3 has a single USB connection which handles both controlling the laser and the camera feed. That's convenient. Finally on the side is the air assist power and hose connectors. The compressor has a nice design. The rubber feet did an excellent job at isolating vibrations. It produced plenty of air, enhancing the quality of the cut and keeping the edges of the cuts clean. The air assist is controlled by software, so you can start or stop the air assist depending on the material that you are cutting. Akmer sells a number of accessories for the P3. Their rotary attachment allows you to engrave round or cylindrical objects. Their air purifier has a 3 layer HEPA filter with activated carbon to filter and purify the exhaust. And if the 400mm by 400mm work area isn't large enough for you, then you can pick up Akmer's auto conveyor feeder to give you infinite Y axis engraving. It's good to know that you have options to upgrade the P3 down the line, picking up new accessories to expand your capabilities. Abilities. The Akmer P3 comes almost entirely pre-assembled. Akmer has a nice printed box fit for retail shelves. Open the box, lift out the laser, and remove some plastic tape securing it. Inside the enclosure is plenty of foam and all of the nicely boxed accessories. The only assembly that you have to do is unscrew a couple of brackets for shipping, slide in the laser module, plug in the cable and air assist hose, and plug in the air assist compressor on the side. It was a great unboxing experience, and I was up and running in minutes. The Akmer P3 can be controlled by any Gerbil compatible software, like Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. They include a copy of Laser Gerbil on the USB drive, so you can use that free software to run the laser. However, I am a huge fan of Lightburn, and I would highly recommend picking up a license if you're using any laser engraver. The Akmer P3 worked perfectly with Lightburn. Akmer includes a machine configuration file on the USB drive, so you simply have to import that configuration to get everything set up. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well the Akmer P3 cuts and engraves. The P3 is the fastest 48 watt diode laser that I've tested when cutting wood. I completely underestimated the speed that this laser can cut with my first two tests on 3mm plywood. I ended up cutting 3mm plywood in a single pass at 1150mm per minute, or 19mm per second. This speed made cutting intricate designs like this living hinge very quick. The P3 has more than enough power to cut through this 30mm thick wood in a single pass. Switching to 24 watt mode, here are my speed tests on 3mm plywood. Would. My kerf test showed that the ideal kerf offset with the 48 watt mode is 0.9 millimeters. That matches up with the advertised dot size of the laser on Akmer's website. Interestingly, switching to the 24 watt mode did not decrease this kerf offset. 
it was still 0.9 millimeters. Usually you'd expect the dot size to decrease with the power of the unit, but the dot size seemed to be the same. This means that the 24 watt mode might not be a big increase to the actual resolution you are able to engrave, but rather just gives you more control with the power percentage. But image engraving on the P3 worked well. I did get better results with the 24 watt mode, but I think that that was due to dialing in other settings rather than just the 24 watt mode change that made that difference. Diode lasers cannot cut clear acrylic but they do work well on dark colored acrylics. In 48 watt mode, I was cutting 3 mm black acrylic in a single pass at 600 mm per minute, and I was getting great engraving results. When I first tested these 3D print log keychains, I noticed some artifacts where the laser first pierced the acrylic. You can see that here where the hole started, and here where the outside was cut. This is the first laser where I've noticed this artifact. It might be due to the power of the 48 watt laser, or the faster speeds where it's cutting at. However, thinking back to my CNC days, I could use Lightburn's lead-in feature to pierce the acrylic and then move into the final contour. That completely removed this artifact. The P3 can also easily hinder thicker acrylics. This 30mm thick black acrylic took 4 passes at 100mm per minute to cut through. Everyone knows that I love slate coasters, and the P3 did an excellent job with it. The 48 watt laser blasted away the stone and made an awesome 3D effect, and the built-in camera made it easy to perfectly position the design onto the coaster. The P3 also excelled with leather. With the power of the 48 watt laser, it's easy to cut a little too deep into the leather but dialing the power back a little gives you great results with little darkening on the edges. Coated aluminum is an awesome material, and the P3 did a good job with removing the coating. I was running at 15,000 millimeters per minute at 50% speeds and got great results. The details are crisp, and it handled all the different colors I threw at it. And speaking of colors, let's talk stainless steel. While the Acma P3 cannot engrave metals, by heating up the surface of stainless steel, you can create beautifully colored oxides. I found the 24 watt mode to be perfect for creating rich blues, purples, and oranges on stainless steel. The 48 watt mode was just too powerful, heating the surface too much and causing warping. Now I have a few additional thoughts. We've seen that the Core XY designs become very prevalent in 3D printers recently, and it's interesting to see them being used on a laser engraver. I don't think Core XY will make as big of an impact in the world of laser engraving. With 3D printing, both axes are equally important, so having the hot end be as lightweight as possible to move in both the X and Y axes equally well is useful. However, with laser engraving, often one axis, the X axis, is moving at max speeds back and forth with the y-axis slowly moving. And with cutting, the speeds are generally slow enough that the benefits of a Core XY is less apparent. The Core XY also leads to some usability differences. When testing, I am often moving the laser by hand. Cut a test pattern, move the laser over, and start the next one. With normal Cartesian laser engravers, you can easily move just the x-axis, without the y-axis moving. However, with a Core XY design, it is easier to move in a diagonal since that only requires one motor moving. To move left and right, both motors need to spin, which means when moving by hand, it's hard to move in just the x-axis. Practically speaking though, that's not really a problem. For almost all of the designs that I engraved, I was using the camera to position the designs on the material. The only time I was manually moving the laser module was when running Lightburn's test patterns, since that cannot be positioned with a camera. But as someone who runs loads of test patterns when reviewing, it was something I noticed. The second thing to note is that the laser nozzle is off-center quite dramatically. This combined with the dark window can make it hard to eyeball the position of the laser. When manually moving the laser around, you want to move the nozzle where you'd like the cut to start, but it is hard to see the nozzle. You could remove the window each time to see the nozzle, but that's a little slow. I ended up placing a little bit of tape on the laser module to indicate where the nozzle is. That made positioning by eye way easier. In conclusion, I found the Acmer P3 to be an excellent fully enclosed benchtop laser engraver. From the great first impressions when unboxing this fully assembled machine, the P3 never let me down. I was surprised by the power of the 48 watt module. The P3 is the fastest cutting 48 watt diode laser that I've tested. I'm not sure if Acmer has better diodes, lenses, or mirrors in the competition, but they all combined into a well focused laser that ate through materials quicker than the rest. The ability to switch into a 24 watt mode is helpful when engraving woods or dialing in the settings for colors on stainless steel. The full enclosure is also packed with features. I like that it comes with a full-sized honeycomb panel, and I use the sliding drawer more often than I expected during my tests. 
The camera made it very easy to accurately position my designs, and the included air assist compressor made sure that the cuts were clean. The unique Core XY motion platform is interesting to see, and enables extremely quick travel speeds, although I didn't quite see it making a big difference in practice. I'd love to hear what you think about the Core XY benefits for laser engravers in the comments below though, so let me know. The Acmer P3 48W laser engraver is on sale for $1,499 US dollars at the time of recording. The 24 watt version is $300 US dollars cheaper, selling for $1,199 US dollars. The 2-in-1 version, with a 10 watt diode and 2 watt infrared laser, is the same price as the 24 watt version at $1,199. US The $1,500 price point can bring a bit of a sticker shock when you first compare with other 48 watt laser engravers on the market. The P3 is not the most expensive, but there are a number of options that cost less. But remember that the P3 includes the enclosure, honeycomb panel, and air assist compressor with it, and that it comes almost entirely pre-assembled. When you include those in the comparison of other 48 watt lasers, then the Acmer P3 starts to seem like a pretty good value for money. I think that it would be a great fit for someone looking for a powerful, fully enclosed diode laser engraver that just works out of the box. No need to futz around, just plug in a few cables and this workhorse is ready to go. I had a great experience with the Acmer P3 and could easily give it a good recommendation. So thank you all for watching my review of the Acmer P3 Diode Laser Engraver. What features did you like? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you are still in the market for a laser engraver, check out my review of the Atomstack A48 Unibody Laser. It has a number of differences that might make you think compared to the Acmer P3. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.